Hello guys, uh, today I would like to actually uh, do a little bit more of a theory video, which also should explain a little bit about why Necroz has problems and why the support of Necroz is not very uh, effective at what it's doing. And this video is about pure unadulterated card advantage. So first of all, what is card advantage? Card advantage is uh, what you produce compared to what your opponent currently has. So if you have six cards in hand while your opponent has five cards in hand, you will have a card advantage of one. If you have five cards in hand and one card on the field while your opponent has five cards in the hand, uh, you also still have a card advantage of one. And every card that causes this number of hand and field combined to go up is um, to be seen as a card advantage game. And I'm uh, now going through most of the uh, combos or possible lines of play that certain plays can do in the current metagame in the current best decks. I'm only going over the basic plays, so no full Dragon Link combo in this video. Uh, but in general, I would like to uh, go over this in theory, and then we will compare what Necros can produce for card advantage. So, uh, first of all, we start off with a Prankets combo. So, Prankets combo is starting with one card. Keep in mind, you would have four other cards in your hand on uh, in actual play. This is when it goes completely through. So here we go for Meow Meow and Fancy's triggers. So we go a uh, plus one. Then we go for the uh, prank. It's do Lulu, -lu -lu, which adds us a card and which goes minus one on summon, but plus one on search. And we go plus one on uh, summon of Dropsies. So. Also, we should have sent uh, Pandemonium off of the fancies, just in case. And now we go here, plus, uh, then we go with this. Usually, this is not the line of play you want to do, but we go plus two off of Doodle Doodle Loo's second effect, which then adds us two more cards, which means now we are at a plus four. We go prank its place for a plus five. And then we go for, uh, yeah, we go for Roxy's technically because it's the theoretically best play because we draw one. Then uh, Bow Wow Bark, uh, and then that this is a minus one. Going for Bow Wow Bark, but we go then plus one due to Roxy's. And then we draw one, so we are still plus five. And then on our opponent's turn, we go for Bow Wow, which goes again, plus, uh, plus one. So we are plus six on the opponent's turn. Uh, compared to the one card we had in hand, we now have five cards in hand and two cards on field, which is a plus six. If you don't want to count the field spell, it's a plus five, uh, but in general, uh, this is like the gist. Then, of course, uh, if we set the prank as Pandemonium, we could go for the Battle Butler. And, I, uh, but, and the Battle Butler is... Uh, the summon is plus zero. The uh, prank its triggers are plus zero. And uh, the popping effect of Battle Butler is uh, car a uh, amount of cards he pops minus one. So I'll keep that in mind. So then we can achieve a theoretical plus ten in card advantage swing, just off of this minus one of the draw that your opponent has. So keep that in mind. Uh, then now we're going to go for another combo, or like another line of play that you will see, which is Magical Meltdown. Magical Meltdown searches Alistair, which is a plus one. Alistair search Invocation for another plus one, so we're plus two. 
Then we go for uh, Moon Maiden, which is a plus zero. And then we go for Invocation, which is a minus one because we are banishing the Moon Maiden. If we go for Invocation Summon, uh, if we go for Al Mirage into uh, the uh, Secure Gardener and then Special Summon a Purgatrio, we're going plus, uh, plus even more. Or if your opponent has a Light in Graveyard, we're gonna go. We're gonna be plus three at this point, and then we go plus one off of Invocation for a plus four. And now we're gonna go for the Tri Brigade plus Trap, which is in this case here a plus zero. First of all. Then the summon is a plus one. We should go for a link two so that we can get rid of uh, the chaos, so that we can go for the the four play. I'm going for a seals, which is illegal, but of course I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. So then we go for the summons, and then uh, we go for Shurike, which is uh, the trap replaces itself. Shurike banishes one, and then we get a send and a search. So Shurike banishes one for a plus one. Uh, Nervel searches for a plus one, and Kit, uh, whatever she sends, could be a plus one. Uh, so we're going plus two to plus three on opponent's turn, and depending on what the link does, uh, we're going uh, overall plus four, up to plus four. So if we instead like were able to summon a Nervel we would actually go plus four. So keep that in mind. This is now Eldritch combo, which is Scarlet plus uh, Conch. So Scarlet replaces itself, which is a plus zero. And then uh, Conch goes for a plus one which is a summon itself and pop. Then we go, uh, this in this case, this would be a uh, Link Spider, and which is then a plus zero again. And then on a, and technically we can run into anything with Eldritch the Golden Lord in battle phase, which technically would be a plus one. Uh, but uh, in this case, we're not counting it for card advantage. And then we go for a plus two with the traps. So we are overall plus three in this rotation. And now we're going to go for uh, the next set of combo, which is Chaos Space plus Discard. This is the most basic thing that you can do in Dragon Link. So we go minus one by a Discard and Chaos Space. Then we summon White Dragon, which uh, goes plus zero. We go for Striker Dragon, which goes plus one, and we go Wyver Burster, which replaces itself. So we're overall uh, in a plus zero tele uh, territory right now. So now we go for uh, our Collapse Serpent. Actually, we are in a plus one territory, my bad. So now we go for uh, Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. And then we get our draw with Chaos Space, which is another plus one. So we are now plus two. And now we go for Seals, which is a minus one. But uh, White Dragon, uh, we're replacing it with a White Dragon, so it is a plus zero. And then uh, we overall have a plus three. If, uh, because Seals has the bounce, which replaces itself. Unfortunately, it gives your opponent the card advantage back. But it usually, if Seals is activated, if you can stop a play, it is a plus in card advantage. So now uh, we have this. And now we go to our favorite Necroz card, which is Nadir Servant. But in this case, we're playing Nadir Servant in Shadal Invoke Darkmouth. And uh, this is uh, the Ungreedy play which is uh, draw one beast, uh, normal summon. We could also summon the beast and spe uh, by sending a Wendy, which would be the uh, plus one again. But uh, if beast is flipped, it is a plus two. 
So keep that in mind that you can also do that play. So we're overall plus three with Punishment because Punishment can send an Ints or a, a Titanic Cloud. And if that goes uninterrupted, it's a plus three and card advantage. So I'll keep that in mind. And now we go for the super duper greedy play with Nadir, which is send Apgalon, send Chism, normal summon, Ecclesia for the plus one, uh, Dogma Maximus, banish the Apgalon, which is neg zero, and then a Maximus sent to you, which is plus zero. If your opponent sends two cards, it's a minus two. Uh, but then we are going to add uh, off of Winda for a plus one, and we're going to add off of Titanoclat for another plus one. So overall, we are uh, plus three now in end phase. And now we activate Chism to special summon a Winda. And uh, we are plus four if we summon win Winda without sending, and plus five if we send something with Chism. So keep that in mind. This is all very bare bones uh, looking at card advantage. And I'll now get uh, get to my point when it comes to the card advantage that Necros produces. So now we shall go for a uh, standard. So we're going to go through all the basic things that you can do with Necros. So first of all, we're going to go for the Unicorn plus um, our uh, Kaleido play. So we go Kaleido, Unicorn. Send one, and then add something. So overall, we're plus zero. This, this is the most box standard play in Necros, and probably one of the best plays in Necros. And uh, yeah, it's a plus zero. Should I say anything more? And then uh, technically, if we out Unicorn, it, so if we now go even try to even plus even more. We're going to now go for an absolutely ridiculous play that you should never do, which is Bayer, send this, send this, and then send another uh, ritual spell. And then you can go for this, and this, and then we can add ourselves Two more ritual spells, technically. Which still is a plus zero. If we if our unicorn gets outed, we're going minus one. And if we banish the kaleidoscope, uh, the stuff for kaleidoscope, we're going plus one. So it like doesn't do anything. So now for the next play. Now, now let's go really, really ham, OK? Let's try to go completely ham here. So we go for Unicorn Kaleidoscope. Or let, let's go for Unicorn plus uh, Shurit plus, uh, plus Bayer. Bayer tribute this and Shurit for a minus two. Sending a ritual spell, sure it goes. Uh, it goes and replaces itself, so we get our Klausulos, and then we get our uh, effective. Then we can uh, do the effect of Klausulos, searching ourselves a mirror, and then we could banish this and this for uh, another ritual spell which is cycle. So we are uh, plus zero yet again. We go for Kaleido Unicorn, which sends us our Herald. And Herald goes and searches us a Unicorn, which still is plus, which searches us a Unicorn, which still is plus zero, which, yeah, still is plus zero. And then we go for a uh, unicorn, add back the uh, shirt. And then next turn, we can do cycle for a plus zero, and shirt goes plus. 
for, uh, we go cycle for an egg one, and sure it gets us a search, which is again a plus zero. And this is basically most what you can do in Necros. So now let's get to the actual pluses of Necros, okay? Which is, in this case, we play into an opponent's board now and do Kaleidoscope Special Breonite, sending a Skull Knight or an Apkalon if you want to. So we are now minus one. We now go Skull Knight for a plus zero, and then we go Breenak for a plus two. This is the best case scenario for pluses in Necros, but this requires a specific board state. And it also requires uh, you to, um, yeah, be uninterrupted in that specific board state, which is a very rare occasion. So you actually need cards to play around that. For example, like we would need to Dark Ruler his entire board and pray he doesn't have a trap to uh, stop this play or a hand trap to stop this play. So overall, we can go plus two with this play. And now for the other play, which is uh, Brio, search Trish, and then go Klauselos, add mirror, and then we go for a mirror, special Trish for a minus one, and then we activate Trish for a plus two. And this again assumes that your opponent does not have Lancea. Your opponent has a card in hand. Your opponent has at least one card on field. And your opponent has at least one card in the graveyard. And we can go plus one with that. Uh, and maybe a tempo plus two if we banish something that summons itself from the graveyard. So this is the maximum pluses that you can do in Necros with the Necros engine only. So now how you're wondering, how are we winning games with Necros? Welcome to the only plus one in the entire engine. So this is the uh, preparation of rights is the only plus one that is completely in engine for Necros. So keep that in mind when playing Necros, that the best you can go in theory with just playing Necros cards is a plus two off of Kaleido Brianak. And then, a, uh, then after that, a plus one or two off of Necros of Trishula and then going into the battle phase and killing another monster so we can go like plus five or plus six. And then we can maybe chain a preparation of rights to get even uh, one more plus. This is the best we can do with Necros in, in terms of pluses. So the reason I'm talking about this is uh, what, cha uh, what changed about the format. And the format is currently changing away from Dragon Link and towards a more mid-range, aka these these decks that produce a mediocre end board, the kind of combo, but also plus every turn. And and every and the entire meta is currently changing to this mid-range stuff. And now please tell me how we are going to ad out advantage prank kids doing a plus six every turn. How are we? Uh, how we are going to out advantage a normal summon Alistair into a Megaba, which then runs over our Unicorn for a plus one, which then goes uh, and adds back Alistair for a uh, Neg zero, which then has a negate for a plus zero, and then end up Tempo Swing, and then also uh, can get a plus one because of the Link monster that is being summoned and then can be extended onwards. The only way you can compete with Necros is drawing broken cards that at least plus one, you know. 
right now. And unfortunately for Necros, there are only very few plus ones, and some, and they are mostly very conditional. This is the set of plus ones that you can uh, play in Necros overall. The Dear Servant goes, of course, plus one if it sends, uh, or plus two, or plus three, depending on how you play. Maximus is, of course, part of this Nadir uh, conglomerate, which goes plus, uh, which goes plus in case of, uh, yeah, if, if your opponent does not play a Dogma deck, it goes plus. So it's a conditional plus two. Uh, righty lefty is a plus one because it goes for uh, left, righty lefty, minus one for Herald of the Arc Light. Herald of the Arc Light minus one trades with your opponent, but uh, so it's a plus zero when it's negating, and the graveyard effect is a plus one. So we overall come out with a plus two in terms of card advantage. And of course, preparation of rights is the turn three plus one that you can do, or the follow up plus one that you can do with Necros. And the point of me simplifying the game right now so much uh, with these replays with this theory here is to get you a picture on when Necros is good or bad, because now I'm going to come to another thing. Uh, everybody likes to complain about floodgates, because, uh, of course, floodgates don't let you play, etc., etc. So now let's go over and uh, look back at our best play in the deck, which, of course, is Kaleido Unicorn. So we go Kaleido Unicorn. Which is a plus zero. So keep that in mind that it's a plus zero. And now let's put that in prospect to two different decks. First of all, Dragon Link. So now let's go over the theory. Uh, the stand, uh, the box standard one card seals pass combo. So if your opponent does the seals pass combo, he will go and discard one off of chaos space to search his, himself the black dragon, special black, white, uh, special black, then uh, go into striker dragon. But striker dragon is negated, so it does not plus one. So we are still plus zero. And then he goes black, white, Actually, he's still minus one. So then we go black, white, go for seals, which is a minus one plus one. Uh, so we are again average. And and of course, you get the plus one off of uh, the chaos space. So overall, we are still plus zero. And then seals bounces our unicorn for uh, minus one. And then he gets a search for a plus one. So overall, he's plus zero if he resolves the uh, entire thing of um, seals pass uh, of the seals pass uh, play. Of course, he can extend more. This is very simplified theory. And now, uh, and meanwhile, like the bounce, if he bounces the unicorn, we still have a unicorn in hand. We go plus one for turn. So finally, we got a plus one. We can then go Brianak. We can go Klausulas. We can go banish this Brianak technically for another Kaleidoscope. And then uh, we are overall plus two. So consider that. This is the um, uh, this is, for example, the best case scenario. And the worst case scenario is, of course, if we uh, we end again on the same board. And now we play versus Alistair Turbo. 
So he activates Meltdown for a plus one. He normal summons Alistair for a plus one. He then uses Invocation uh, after linking away the Alistair for the Moon Maiden. So he is then going to banish our Herald of the Arclight and his Alistair in Graveyard for a plus zero to summon the Mechaba. So he is plus two. And then he's going to use the battle phase to run over our Unicorn for a plus one, so he's plus three. And then Invocation is going to replace the Alistair, which is a plus four. And then, uh, and that overall puts everything into the light here. Because even if we discard a Valkyr for the Unicorn, we're still going minus one. So he's still going plus four on us. And my point with floodgates is floodgates are something called a plus n. And n is the amount here. So you go plus zero So we got uh, so the n in this case is the amount of um, card advantage your opponent is producing. Minor, uh, minus the amount, minus the amount of card advantage that your opponent would produce without a floodgate. So, so in the case of Unicorn as a floodgate, if we play Unicorn into Dragon Link and he goes into Striker Seal Pass. We're overall, uh, Unicorn is overall uh, plus, uh, so they would usually go plus two. All right, wait, they are going plus one. So N in this case is zero minus one. So overall, in this case, n is minus one. And then, yeah, we, we should actually say that and uh, our unicorn is now going plus one just by existing. If your opponent has an out for it within this combo, as in the inter, uh, in as in the part of the Alistair normal summon make Mechaba go burr, uh, we actually are not stopping him, which in this case is n is zero minus zero. So we're not even interrupting him. Which then means that Unicorn is a plus zero with its effect. And that is how floodgates work. So this should be uh, showing most of the card advantage that Necroz is producing and how it like handles its economy and how badly it handles its economy. So uh, this is a weird video, I know. But I made this uh, to, first of all, get to my final point, which is complaining about the horrible support that we got. And uh, then also go over, yeah, why Necroz is currently, it first, it, it was a good deck uh, before the meta shift happened, which means it was going overall plus one on Dragon Link every turn. Or at least plus one every turn. 
in the case of the basic combo, of course. And uh, yeah, compared to um, and right now, you're more likely going plus zero because most decks are ignoring you. If we do the Prankets combo, they uh, go one minus one plus because uh, the um, Kaka Doodle Doo can still tribute itself. Actually, you're going minus two pluses through Unicorn. But because they're going plus four, your overall, uh, because they're still going plus four, you're, uh, you're overall behind four cards. And that is a problem. And this problem ha uh, has only one solution. There is no engine you can throw into Necroz that solves this problem. And with that, I mean, Necroz has no inherent turn one unconditional plus ones, or plus twos, or plus threes, or plus anything, actually. It has very conditional pluses, which puts you at the severe disadvantage against every deck that can out plus a unicorn pass, which is pretty much every deck. Hence, Necroz currently sucks and will only be good when Unicorn, when this plus N is at least as high as your opponent's, uh, when this plus N is at least as high as your opponent's card advantage that he produces. Which includes his own floodgates, which are also plus N. So the combined total of card advantage that your opponent produces within two turns has to be exactly Unicorn Pass. Or less than Unicorn Pass. So this overall is a very theoretical video. It may be a little bit too high for some people. In simple cases, this is all about counting cards. It is a way you can play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, of course, there are way more aspects to Yu-Gi-Oh! This is, even though it sounds absolutely complicated, it's super simplified. It's a super a super simplified view at Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, by just looking at cards in terms of numbers. And overall, yeah. This is, I hope you guys enjoy this video, even though it's confusing. And see ya.